I was a redhead for gosh over 10 years over a decade of my life um I had this real moment over the the first lockdown where I went oh god I think I'm being defined by my hair and you know that's not something I want I I think it's as much as I love being a redhead and I probably will go back to it at some point I I wanted to challenge myself to try something new hence the blonde yeah, lockdown was a good a good time to do that my body is also kind of uh, challenging my hair and slowly letting it go. So I think I will eventually have to learn to adapt as well. <laughs> hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. And today I have an interesting one. I'm joined by Ashlyn Doth and we're talking about some of her FMV games, uh, most notably the Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. I had the fortune to talk to her uh, recently for a different movie and I was able to ask a couple questions about an uh, area that I love, FMV games. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you do. Dr. Decker was murdered. Dr. Decker thought one of his patients was trying to kill him. I'd heard Dr. Decker was stabbed, but I didn't know for sure. Do you think I'm a suspect, Doctor? All Dr. Decker did was encourage me to think. Do you think I killed my parents? Why? Because I stabbed my husband. Decker would... It's our secret. Once you see the truth, it's hard not to spread chaos yourself. I'm a shape-shifting vampire werewolf. I didn't have any legs. Thing that's following me. It doesn't have a face. I prefer actions over words, Doctor. You know that. Dr. Decker killed it! No! It's hungry. It's just a game, Doctor. I like playing games. Uh, there we hey, go. Hey, there, there we, we go. go. Got there eventually. Hi, how are you hey, doing? I'm doing well, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Well, thanks so much for joining me. This is Island Dioth, who plays Maria in Lair, which is available on, on digitally and on demand. It came out November 9, 2021. It's an interesting horror film, uh, and I loved your character in this movie. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Just one little thing. Oh. So uh, my name is one of those weird Irish names oh, no. uh, that is nothing like how it looks. So it's pronounced Ashlyn, but you can Ashlyn. call me Ash. <laughs> okay. I'll call you Ash. All right. Well, there, there we go. I'll have to redo the introduction now. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I should no, have please. warned you. It's a nightmare name. Please correct me. Um, so <laughs> the first thing I have to ask, I was pleasantly surprised when I was watching the film and I was like, that looks like the person from Dr. Decker. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, it is. And uh, I, I love that. That's actually probably the main reason I wanted to talk to you because I love that. Oh, game too. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know what, Dr. Decker was, I mean, uh, uh, for me, it was the first fmv i ever did and it's still my favorite i love it i i loved playing violet in the the follow-up game but there's something so great about decker and mariana is just a, an absolute joy of a character for any actor i think yeah she must have been fun because she was like so kind of cagey and manipulative and just perfect uh it must have been a fun character to play Oh, she was. She was amazing. I mean, I, I didn't know anything about FMV when I got the role of Mariana. I feel like I've learned so much from the fans and from Twitch and everything. But I something that was incredible as an actor is with FMV, you obviously you're having to create a character who's completely capable of numerous different timelines. Mm -hmm. And so she has to be simultaneously capable of being a murderer but also capable of being completely innocent but also capable of being completely psychotic and I think it challenges you to make really fully formed 3D roles which is just absolutely my cup of tea. Yeah no, and it must be tough to kind of like like you said you have to shift also based on how they respond so you, you, your character not only do you have to be able to play them but you have to be able to do that so quickly because you, you know you're like well they've got I don't know how many 300 shots to do let's start with the first one where you, you know here's the situation now we're gonna go now you're crazy now you're yeah so that must have been very difficult but also very fun it was i mean i was lucky with devecki because they are just such a, a fantastic team to work with it's lovely it really is a family business in the most literal sense and they're i mean i as an actor i really like working on my toes I like the challenge I like mm. how fresh everything feels um and that's one of the many reasons I love working in film but um so when I was doing 
Decker and, and then Shapeshift as well, and then to a lesser extent, Poe Monroe. That for me was really exciting that I had no time to think about it. I had to act on gut. There's no time to intellectualize. You've just got to really believe in, in the character and really believe in your, your kind of internal narrative. Yeah. And also it's, it must be a very different type of acting because you are, you know, your co-star is like the camera, like you have to sell yeah. it to, and sometimes you don't get any feedback from the camera, right? It's just like, yep. so that must be a, it's a very different skill. It is a bit. Good fun though. Yeah. No. And, and I mean, it's, you, like you said, you've, you've gone to do, uh, you've gone to do multiple other FMV games as well. It seems like it's a, a, a niche, but very interesting uh, group to have. Do you, have you, have they all been the same developer or is it after Decker, you kind of like made a name for yourself and, you know, there aren't that many FMV games. So maybe people, you know, when they're making them, they just look through the catalog to see who can do it. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm really picky about uh, the projects that I choose. I think I, I don't really believe in doing a project unless I'm passionate about it. And so when I started working with Devecki, one of the things that really drew me to them was their really fabulous scripts and I think it's fair to say that that's not true <laughs> of all <laughs> FMV games. Um, and I've been sent a couple of scripts and I've been approached about a couple of projects. But as of yet, the only ones that I've been persuaded by have been the Devecki scripts. Oh. Um, but I'm always open to more. I'm always open to people sending me stuff. I, I love reading new things and I always go into everything with an open mind. Yeah, no, that's... I... I kind of want to just make this a, a Dr. Tucker and, and <laughs> FMV game uh, interview and then cut a, another one for Lair after if you've got time. That would be fun. <laughs> um, but again, uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, as you can tell, I'm a gamer. So I, I, I loved that when this game came out, there, it felt like it, like you said, there had been, there weren't that many FMV games out. It was like, it was a lost art almost. And it was so great to see it kind of redone in like a modern way with like high quality shots because if you play the old ones it's it's impressive for the time but it is like a very compressed experience it doesn't feel cinematic anymore and then and then dr decker came out and a couple others after that kind of revived that so i, I do love that that is you know coming back yeah it's i mean it's fantastic for me to see and i was really proud to see then bandersnatch coming out um and and taking inspiration from so many of these games and so many of the games that came before i think I think there's a huge amount that could be mined in that kind of interactive cinema, interactive TV world. And I'm I'm really excited to see what happens with it because I don't think that we've quite got there yet. I think there's more that can be achieved by this going kind of more mainstream. And I think the increase in quality of acting, of scripts, of sets, of cinematography is, is all part of that. Well, I, I love that you mentioned that because it just made me think like, if if our future horrible or amazing future is kind of more of a vr ar type situation it feels like this would be kind of the perfect medium for that right if you've got like a fully you know enveloped system that you can then really be that character then an fmv game does feel like kind of the right thing to do if you really want to kind of step into another world absolutely and certainly for for me anyway i mean i the thing i love about it is that your suspension of disbelief is is so present because you know you're you're talking to real people you're not talking to anything computer animated or drawn however skillfully these are real people in a room with you and i think that's and in a vr sense that would be mind-blowingly brilliant yeah and it's, yeah like like you said the real people because there's always I, I guess at some point we might get rid of the uncanny valley. Uh, I don't know when, and I'm worried for when that will be, but at least at this point, if you're in a VR world, there's always going to be something just a little off, unless you're yeah. in like a, you know, a video world where the, the people are interacting as they actually would. So, Yeah, I think definitely as an actor, I, I don't want to risk losing the uncanny valley thing. <laughs> I, I fear the day we're all replaced with a computer programmed versions of ourselves collated from social media and films i think all of us are i'm sure that some, <laughs> some computer could ask like more interesting questions do better research <laughs> so i think we're all worried about that but maybe it'll be fine maybe because then i can just consume content and not have to to make content on top of that so heaven yeah. awesome so now i have to ask uh you know i, I call it kind of the elephant in the room 
you have done a good amount of like horror and, and kind of dark content, you know, from Dr. Decker to Dark Knights with Pon Rowe and Lair. Um, and your name is, is Ashlyn Death. And, and yeah. Ashlyn Death is like the most metal, amazing horror name I've ever heard. And I imagine you've probably heard this before, but have you ever thought about just dropping that apostrophe? <laughs> well, I, at uni, a lot of people just call me Death because, you know, it, it is metal. It's, it's really punk and I kind of love that about it. Um, no, I mean, I, the, the thing I love about my name, and I had a lot of friends changing their name when I was at drama school, but I never wanted to do that. And it's one of the reasons I didn't change my name when I got married as well, was because for me, my, my name holds on to a lot of my heritage. Um, you know, Ashlyn is a very Irish name, which is my mom's side. And then Diaf, uh, it's a literal translation of, of Af in Belgium, um, because I believe we were the Huguenots chased out of Belgium uh, many centuries ago uh, during religious persecution and that's a part of my family I'm absolutely not in touch with I know nothing about my Belgian heritage distantly back we don't know <laughs> anyone in our family that's Belgian anymore so I kind of hold on to that plus the the badassery of being called death <laughs> yeah well I mean I death is pretty metal but death and, and that that background is also pretty metal too um and I like I like that maybe you're trying to get in touch with it right because I think in the past you've had more kind of red hair uh with yeah. Irish roots and now you're maybe going a little bit more with the Belgian side maybe you're just trying to explore those different uh those different sides always I mean <laughs> I being a redhead I was a redhead for gosh over 10 years over a decade of my life um I had this real moment over the, the first lockdown where I went, oh God, I think I'm being defined by my hair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not something I want. I, I think it's as much as I love being a redhead and I probably will go back to it at some point. I, I wanted to challenge myself to try something new, hence the blonde. <laughs> yeah, lockdown was a good, a good time to do that. My body is also kind of uh, challenging my hair and slowly letting it go. So I think I will eventually have to learn to adapt as well. <laughs> so brilliant. Uh, but, uh, that, that wasn't, I mean, lockdown did contribute to that. So I will say, um, I, I always joke that I'm famous in really niche corners of the internet. And I think that's probably, uh, the biggest truth. Um, but so for me to, to even be considered for a project like Claire was, an enormous privilege and I've I've been honored to work with such amazing actors and such an incredible filmmaking family as part of that um so yeah I'm, I'm very grateful for the production and for the the family that's been created around that and I don't think it's that bad to be very I mean I, I agree I think you're very famous in very niche corners of the internet but I don't think that's, <laughs> that's bad because like that is the kind of fan base that is going to go out and like devour a, a new movie that you're in so yeah i think that's They're probably the best yeah it's i feel so lucky like honestly my my followers are so kind and so generous of spirit and i i have get these messages from people that have seen the game or or seen films that i've done like or, or followed the poison ivy journey and i am always so taken aback by just the en enormous emotional generosity people have like to take time out of your day to tell someone you enjoyed their performance is I think a quite a brave thing to do if you if you don't know the person but also just a really lovely kind of quite selfless thing mm -hmm. it's just I think it's so sweet and I yeah I I have a lot of time and a lot of respect for the people that follow me it's it's wonderful well that's also great to hear because I think a lot of times you know maybe people aren't like maybe people don't do that because they're like oh well they're too busy like I don't want to bug them I don't want to seem you know like like a crazy person which <laughs> you still can but uh, I, I do love that you're you know it, it does hit home and it is kind of appreciated that's that's great to hear <laughs> um so you know, let's one more video game question uh, so uh, do you have any other games on the horizon anything coming for you I know you're very picky with scripts is there anything else coming out that uh that you're looking forward to making uh so video game wise no i'm i have not worked on a video game since poe and monroe um we were originally going to make a game called penny dreadfuls with devecki um but it's a very expensive game to make so that's been shelved for the time being while they focus on kind of slightly more micro budget uh projects but it's it's definitely something i'd consider going forward i mean i know uh there is such a huge market for gaming and i it's something I really enjoy working on. So I hope it comes up again soon, but we'll see. 
Yeah, I hope so too. I mean, everyone was kind of stuck at stuck at home for a while and we might be again. So what better way than having some sort of <laughs> interactive story to reconnect, uh, reconnect, I guess, to people. So absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you. That was Ashlyn Da talking about FMV video games in general and particularly the infectious madness of Dr. Decker. It's an interesting game. It's a, it's a fun kind of FMV revival that came out at a time when there weren't that many of them. So definitely check it out. It's available on pretty much every platform as well as our other games like Dark Knights with Poe Monroe and The Shapeshifting Detective. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.